Anyang Chenggu and Konnichiwa. That's my attempt at using Korean and Japanese saying hello and welcome to an awesome episode where we have a benchmark. 2021 Mazda 3. That's a manual transmission, top of the line. It's my boss's car. And then next to it, the contender. What I think is a bargain. And that's the 2021 Hyundai Elantra N-Line. <laughs> it's a great car. And the first minute of this video, I'm gonna tell you everything wrong with these cars. And for the rest of the video, I'm gonna tell you everything that's right. Starting with the Mazda 3. Now, if you want a manual transmission Mazda 3, you have to get the hatchback and you have to get the top of the line, the premium. It's the only way to do it. So it starts at $28,000 and that is ridiculous. They don't have any base model with a manual transmission and that's a real shame because it's a really fun car. Then there's the Hyundai. It is a bargain. However, there are components in the vehicle that feel kind of bargain basement. That's including a lot of the hard plastics, including on the door panels and of course, in the very center. It's kind of loose feeling. Also the screen, it's eight inches. It really looks small in that area where you compare it to other vehicles. And then there's the seats. Some of you guys may not like the sporty seats in the Hyundai. They're only heated, they're not cooled, they're not leather. I think they're great, but not everybody does. And then finally, there's the design. Both vehicles, I think, look really good, but not everybody does. Front end of the Hyundai especially looks a little bit aggressive, and some people may not like that, but I do. Now, 201 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque may not sound like a lot to some people. Now, what? Look at it this way. Right now, the Honda Civic Si, which would be a direct competitor with this car, well, it's not being built right now. It will be built next year. And then last year when it was built, it was comparable to this vehicle in terms of overall performance, although you had more options available. And then, of course, there's the Volkswagen Jetta GLI. Now, the GLI, in my book, is amazing bargain, especially because you have unique suspension and it's just a great car. I think that this one gives you more for the money, a lot more for the money. And even though the GLI does outperform it in terms of horsepower and whatnot, this vehicle outperforms almost everything with fuel mileage. 31 MPG combined. Now that is with the seven speed dual clutch, which by the way is a $900 option. Otherwise, you have a very nice shifting six speed manual option. And that's why the competition is so small. There are only a few vehicles in this class that offer a manual and of course an automatic or some sort of automatic transmission option. Bear in mind that powers the front wheels and underneath the vehicle, and this is very important, let me show you. Come on down here. Those valance, I don't know if it's functional or not, but exhaust, you see the exhaust? Oh, thank you. It's real. The Germans have recently been getting rid of exhaust pipes, right? Functional ones, at least. This is functional. And it doesn't sound too bad, either. And here's the benchmark with the Skyactiv G engine. Very efficient. This one puts out 186 horsepower and 186 pound-feet of torque. And the hood is really hot and I just burned my hand. Very important things to understand about this powertrain. Yes, there's a turbocharged option and it is fantastic, but it only comes with an automatic transmission and all-wheel drive and it's way more expensive. Unfortunately, to buy this vehicle, you're going to have to deal with a few things. First of all, the manual transmission, just like a lot of other cars, is not quite as efficient as the automatic. This one gets 27 MPG combined. That's still not too bad. However, unfortunately, to buy this car, it starts at around 28 grand, and that's because you have to get the premium version of it. I'm baffled about Mazda's choice with this vehicle. Regardless, this Skyactiv G is very efficient. You can get a lot better mileage out of it if you drive it right. It is quiet, but when you rev it, it sounds really good. The 
these engines are known to be reliable. This is just a hell of a setup, and I just wish Mazda had more options for you guys. But as it stands, I still consider this whole vehicle, including the powertrain, the benchmark. I'm really not thrilled with this. Ugh. It makes me sad. I much prefer having a regular park. I know that this car is high tech, but I much prefer having a regular parking brake like the Hyundai. Still, some of you guys are gonna be like, well, that's high tech, and it's good for safety. Now, okay, we're on gravel right now. Normally, I wouldn't even start talking to you guys in a car like this until I'm on the road, but I wanted to point out something. The noise isolation is way better than old Mazdas. Old Mazdas really had an issue with taking a lot of the grumbling from the outside and isolating it. So this is a major improvement. Everything else in the car is well suited for spirited driving, but not necessarily super hot driving. That might be the one part where a lot of fans are like disappointed. Now we've done a lot of other reviews with this very same car. It's not a sports car. It's not even close to be honest with you compared to some of the competition it's fun to drive it's actually a fairly good ride on the highway the compromise really is in the suspension setup it's a little bit too wobbly for some people I think it's a good compromise but if you're throwing it around a corner it's not set up for sport it's set up for light sport as I mentioned before the manual transmission is relatively rewarding the shifts you can feel them. I think this is a great transmission for somebody who's a beginner. It's just so easy to use, so smooth. One thing about Mazdas is that they're very smooth. This is a very revvy engine, it enjoys to rev. And it's not quite like the older ones that really like to rev, but you can get it up to redline and it'll make some noise and it'll move you. Even up here at high elevation, this is a decent powertrain. And the overall experience of driving this vehicle is still one of the best in class. Now remember, we are talking about cars that started around $21,000. So this car competing with those, it's no contest with this really sweet interior and some of the tech. But when those cars get all the goodies, and they start coming into the territory of this car price-wise, and that's where you really have to be a Mazda fan to justify the price. Now. I'm not going to go too fast because I don't want to get killed by my manager, but if you go beyond Redline, this car will not reward you. It'll cut power. I love the back side of this vehicle. I love the rear quarter, but not everybody does. This rear design, which <laughs> inside the vehicle creates a huge blind spot. But I think outside the vehicle looks really good. So of course, form and function. But the Kodo design, horse and rider is one, all that stuff really does play out in this vehicle. I love Mazda design. I've never ever made a secret of the fact that I think that their designs are some of the best out there aesthetically. And I will talk about their interiors in a moment, but I wanted to quickly walk through this and then work on the competitor because that car's interesting. Another thing that Mazda's recently done is they've changed the grill, grill design. Do you guys remember when they had like the happy face grill design? There were riots caused by that. This is better, way better. Angry Eyes, which by the way, really works well with our editor Zach, this is his car. And the overall look of the vehicle is super smooth from any angle. I really like it. Once again, I know not, not it's subjective, okay? But the Hyundai is a little bit different because there's kind of good and bad with the regular model and they fixed a lot of that with this because you get a unique front end. That's including larger vents, a lot more black going across, making it look wider. That is according to their actual designer. I kind of like the design of these 18 inch wheels. I'm not a big fan of black wheels. I think it kind of swallows everything up. So this is not entirely black. And I like that. It's actually specific to the end line. These 18 inch wheels are wrapped in Hankook tires. Big surprise there. And then you have the kick panel here. That's unique to the vehicle as well. And of course, badging, black mirrors. Hello, let's get in here. That's right. 
My large American booty fits nicely in here. I know a lot of you guys don't like to fall into a car, but some of you do. And there are a few surprises when you get into the vehicle, namely the design. Because the interior design is just like the base car, but they added a few things to make it special. Some of which is the stitching on the seats, this steering wheel, which by the way is fantastic and alone is worth the price of entry. A little end down here, red stitching, really good feel. Shifter, which by the way, thank you for having a shifter. Hyundai does build transmissions that are push button, which I can't stand. This feels nice. Everything else in the interior is pretty much what you would expect, but there is one more surprise, and that's the door panels. The door panels have red stitching in them as well. Unfortunately, they don't have anything up top, so it's kind of a hard surface. Now this car, <laughs> as it sits, I mean, they start around 25. That's for this car and pretty much everything you see here, but with the manual transmission. If you get this one, the dual clutch, it's a $900 option. But there's one thing in here that I love. Ready? Oh yeah! I love a manual parking brake. I know this doesn't have the manual in it, but I've driven that car. And the manual transmission shifts nice. It's very smooth and easy, a little rubbery. The Mazda is more rewarding to shift. And if we can get our hands on the next SI, Honda makes a fantastic manual transmission as well. They're all very different in their personalities. The clutch is very light with this car. But with this transmission, it's one of the few that I actually enjoy that's kind of an automatic one, dual clutch. All right, now there's this huge button right here that says drive mode. And the cool thing about this car is drive mode actually makes a difference, at least with the transmission. Doesn't do anything with the steering as far as I can tell. So you hit drive mode. Right now I'm in sport, but you can go to smart and that kind of dulls things down and changes the algorithm a little bit with shifting, making this car a little bit more efficient. And then normal, which is ooh, kind of a little bit in between. Really good for stop and go traffic. How does a fat guy fit in the back? Well, let me show you. Not bad. Way better than many competitors. That's one of the things I love about this car. There is no rear vent, and that's a bummer because some competitors, well, one, offer that. But you do get seats that are actually relatively comfortable. They're a little bit tight for people with big shoulders and, well, big bodies all together. Headroom's not too bad. If I pull my head all the way back, I do sweep the roof a little bit, but I have a tall torso. Legroom is excellent, and I have the seat all the way back. So really good red leg room. And yes, of course, just like everybody else, two drink holders. There are no USB anything here. So remember, this model technically isn't the highest grade of Elantra, but you have to drag people around. It's not too bad. Oh, the trunk? 14.2 cubic feet of space. That's not bad. This car is surprising. First of all, both vehicles have really big wheels, so they have rubber kind of painted onto them. As such, not great for quiet driving, although the Mazda is impressive for a Mazda. This car, you can hear a lot more these hand cooks are actually fairly grippy on the road, but they're not the quietest things on the planet. Still, if you think about this car as a hot commuter car, then you're on to the right track in my mind. The handling, now I'm in sport mode, I think, let me see, yep, sport mode. And I'd probably leave it in sport mode all day long. The shifting is crisper, the overall feel of the car kind of tightens up. Unfortunately, it doesn't do much with the steering. I prefer a heavier steering feel. So with that being said, still, the feel of the steering wheel is fantastic. I love being able to have this little section here where my fingers actually feel the stitching. And by the way, the steering gear in this has been changed for a much sportier overall feel and better driving dynamics. Speaking of better driving dynamics, the suspension has almost all been redone, beefed up. That's including spring rate and the bushings and the brakes are beefier. Almost everything underneath this car makes it a much better performing vehicle. Now, yeah, sure, I can spank it and kind of get some feel out of the corners. You know what I'm saying? 
it really does provide great grip around a corner. Let me show you this one. All right, here we go. I'm gonna take off. You're gonna hear the wheels. Just little. Just the spooling up of the turbo. It's so happy going around, say between 2,000 and 5,000 RPM. Maximum torque kicks in under 2,000 RPM and it stays flat way up, which I love. Unfortunately, there's a little problem I'm gonna show you over here. And it has to do with both the transmission and the turbocharger. I'm not going to give it much power, but just a little bit right here at the stop and power. There it goes. See what I'm saying? So it's a little bit of a drop off, a little bit of a lag, and it's not just the turbo, it's also the transmission kind of going, you know, oh, okay, this is what you wanted. It still makes this car fast. I honestly, if I didn't live in Colorado where I could really use all wheel drive, the manual version of this car is a bargain. And here's the great news. Right now, I went online and I found a bunch of these cars for between twenty-five and twenty-seven thousand dollars, despite all the craziness with the chips, and despite all the craziness with people bumping the price, and that's because these aren't very popular, which is a shame. But it's good for you, the consumer. Now, granted, you might have to go out of state to find one, but they exist, and that I think is fantastic. Welcome to a luxury. Check this out. One of the reasons why we benchmark Mazda in this class is because it's best in class with interior, especially the premium. Now it's not fair to compare this car to that one because this car is top of the line and if you get the lower end versions of the car, everything's not quite as nice, but still the layout is phenomenal. I love the manual transmission. For those of you who like a uh, medium throw, this is great. Engagement's simple. <laughs> it's just a really good, very basic transmission in terms of learning. This is a great one to learn on. So easy to engage and it's a little bit of a snick snick, just a little. Infotainment system in this vehicle, a little bit different, a lot different than the one that is offered in Hyundai. This screen, not really for touching this section here for heating air conditioning beautifully laid out the quality of everything here the buttons the feel is just top-notch a lot of other competitors are beginning to catch up to Mazda still everything that you see here that's including this panel here which is nicely padded really is top-notch so why do I think this Hyundai is so fantastic this it's price. Now these cars start at 25, basically just over $25,000. This one as equipped, 26,360. Now when you think about all the cars it competes with currently, that is a hell of a bargain. Remember, it has a specially set up suspension, beefier brakes. It has a very powerful little engine. Yeah, okay, it's not quite as fast as some of the guys, but it's faster than the other guys, so it's right there in the middle. But with the comfort, the convenience, killer warranty I think it's a great bargain yeah it's not quite up there with the Mazda when it comes to interior and maybe some of the design but man it's way better than a boring regular car right guys if you have to commute why not do it in something fun thanks for joining me for the fast lane car this is Nathan see you next time